Hello, this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. It's Thursday, the 12th of June, 2008, and uh, I've got my headset fixed here, so we're good to go. The S&P 500 finished with a gain of 57 cents today, but clearly we're still in a uh, deep downtrend here on the daily time frame with lower highs and lower lows. The uh, most important level of potential resistance for this market, if it should rally further, is up near that 137.5 level. But there's no evidence of buyers being present in, he present in here. As you see that the uh, sell-off that began on June 6th uh, continues to exert itself with uh, a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. The market did close with a gain, as I said, uh, as it, uh, you know, it gapped higher. But then it was, you know, trending lower for most of the session and uh, just came positive really right at the end of the day. If you look at the average pr price uh, for today, it was about 134.80. That's the volume weighted average price. Uh, the average price that the S&P 500 closed at or traded at uh, uh, based on the shares traded. And the, uh, so as, as I said, the, you know, it, it, it gapped higher. We saw some follow through and then the market made a lower high, another lower high, and then took out this low right in here right at about one o'clock once again so again you've got to keep your eye on that market at about one o'clock a lot of these moves have been coming around that time and that's really where the uh you know the best action of the day occurred uh for you know during this downtrend with these nice pattern of lower highs and lower lows that wasn't interrupted until right here late in the day but we are back below that 135 level so that's uh that's something to can be can you know t take into consideration really 135 and a half is uh, the more important level of resistance. There's no reason to think this market's going to turn around, but if it gets above 135 and a half, then perhaps we could see a little bit further uh, squeeze rally, maybe up towards 137, 37 and a quarter or so. But uh, clearly, you know, with a declining five-day moving average, declining 50-day moving average, declining 200-day moving average, this market still has a lot of uh, issues, and the inver uh, the head and shoulders pattern that we've been looking at. Uh, still, remember, it gives us a price target down near about uh, 130 and a half or so. We just take the height of that and uh, grab it and put it down there. So it's about 130 and a half is where that pattern projects to. Again, don't take patterns too literally. It gives us a potential downward target, uh, but nothing goes straight down, and that's still four points away. So, you know, with a deeply damaged weekly market. Uh, it, it's not unlikely to think that these lows will eventually be tested. Not looking for that immediately as we are getting a little bit oversold here, but that doesn't mean it can't keep continue to go lower. So uh, just it's still too early to do any buying in here if you're looking at, uh, you know, picking up bargains. A lot of the stocks that have been, you know, real leaders of the momentum are getting hit even harder. Look at, you know, dry ships and... Uh, EXM in the uh, shipping industries, uh, you know, some of the, a lot of the solar stocks, you know, continue to just stay weak. Uh, First Solar is, you know, getting damaged pretty badly. Had a good day today, but, you know, a lot of these st charts just don't look good, like Sun Power continuing to, to be weak. So you've got to be very uh, aware that the, the path of least resistance for most stocks continues to be lower here. The Russell 2000 continues to uh, struggle with this 72 level to stay above it and um, it, as long as it stays above it then a, a larger sell-off is going to be averted but it's only a for now really we're we're back below the 50-day moving average two days we broke that trend line yesterday the 200-day moving average decline is is still declining if we see a rally here over the next week or so i don't really expect to get back up above 73 or so and then from there most likely we're going to see continued downside in the Russell 2000, probably down towards this uh, you know, 68 or so. A lot of people ask me, why cover the Russell? I don't care about the Russell or the semiconductors or the financials. Well, the sem semiconductors are very important to the NASDAQ overall. If you're interested in the NASDAQ, you should be interested in the semiconductors. And the financials, obviously, uh, have, are, are you know, hugely important to the S&P 500. And they tend to, to lead them in here lately. As this market it, it further deteriorates, it puts more uh, pressure on the, on the S&P 500 as it's a large uh, piece of the S&P 500 and uh, continues to uh, just you know, act terrible down here. Big volume, uh, big news again, too. So we're back to the Bear Stearns lows uh, almost on an uh, intraday basis. But we continue to close well below 
uh, the close from the Bear Stearns news, which was right about here. So still a lot of reasons for concern in the financials and, uh, the, you know, the bottom. Uh, as I'll repeat, because I got a lot of arguments back over in here from emailers saying that, no, the bottom isn't a process, as you say, Brian. It's an event, and that was the event. Well, now here we are three months later back testing those lows, and I can confidently tell you that uh, it is a process. It's not an event. Uh, if they don't scare you out on the way down, they will typically wear you out during the long accumulation process. The biggest reason for concern, you know, continued concern in this market is the strength of oil. Oil was, you know, opened down weak today, made a lower low, and then the buyers came back into it. And really, this market holds up very well. And I think breaking past this 112 on, on the USO could begin a new leg higher for, for, uh, for oil. So uh, be aware that, that, this, uh, you know, that this oil trend is still very much intact, very strong, rising five-day moving average. It's got this higher low in here. Now if it breaks this little downtrend line and a little recent resistance near about 112, 112 and a half, then we could see continued upside strength in uh, oil. And I think that's going to be very damaging to the overall psychology. It seems as though the oil, we've really, as far as the oil to equities relationship goes, we've reached the breaking point where this market just can't absorb any more strength in oil. And it's going to continue to, to weigh on the, the confidence of the uh, equity buyers. The NASDAQ 100 uh, is trying to find some support here near this 50-day moving average. It's closed below it twice. I've said it many times in the past. You want to be more aware of the direction of the 50 day moving average than one or two days close below it. I still think that uh, it's possible we could get a another little rally up in here in in this market. Uh, perhaps you know even back up to 48, 48 and a half before we see a larger breakdown. Um, but this market is clearly showing troubles and and I wouldn't I would say that if you're long uh, bigger positions, maybe investments, any rally attempt up towards that 200-day moving average near 48 and a half should be used uh, to lighten your positions. And uh, and then, you know, if and when it rolls back over, that's going to be a good time, I think, for a uh, uh, for, for bigger short positions. But right now, again, the market's kind of just trying to stabilize in here near this 50-day uh, moving average in these, these prior important levels, 4640, if you remember, was an important level, uh, you know, back a couple months ago, forty-six dollars and forty cents. That would be your first potential line of defense for the for the buyers. But we're still seeing no reason at all to be a buyer in here. We've got lower highs and lower lows, and uh, the market will need to at least to flatten out. You know, if you're looking for a long weekend, uh, early in the summer, I think uh, that tomorrow's a great day to take off and uh, and enjoy a third day off.